audio jungle. Exercise two in chapter one of the GED book involves knowing your addition facts. Facts like five plus three and eight plus seven. And I'm not going to sit here and teach you guys how to add um, those numbers because I figure, well, most of us know how to do it. If you don't, um, you're welcome to use what God gave you, your fingers. So that's what I tell my students. I said, God gave you a little calculator right here. I can sure add six plus seven. I got seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Pretty simple, guys. Y'all don't need me to talk about this. However, if you are worried and you'd like to practice and memorize these facts, here's what you can do. In the McGraw-Hill math book, uh, chapter two, exercises two, you can do that exercise. But then in Quizlet, um, I made a set for y'all um, in my GED math class called 1.2 addition facts, and you can practice them. Now, here's my recommendation. Um, we learned about the different modes um, that you could use in Quizlet uh, in our introduction video. You can go back and review that if you don't remember. But I recommend that you do this one in learn mode and then in the race mode. Anything that's a fact that you want to memorize, you eventually want to ramp it on up to race mode because that's how we remember things quickly. Okay, and that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Even though I told you I wasn't going to teach you how to add, I am going to teach you to check your work like a math teacher. Because people give me some crazy answers, uh, especially when they've been working for a while, brain starts getting tired. So I just wanted to show you a pattern that I noticed that's going to help you to check your work. I've got a couple of math problems, real simple addition problems on this board, and you probably even know the answers to this. But what I want to point out to you is that when the two numbers we're adding are the same type of number. And what I mean, when I'm talking about types here, I'm talking about even or odd. When they're the same type of number, I'm expecting to get an answer that's even. So six and four are both even numbers. And when I add six and four, I get six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I get ten. And ten, remember, you only have to look at the back side of a number to tell if it's even or odd. Ten ends in one of the even numbers, zero, two, four, six, or eight, and therefore ten is an even number. So again, these are both even. My answer is even. Same thing happens when my numbers are both odd. I add two odd numbers like seven and nine and I get 16. An even number ends in a six. And so if they're the same type, if they're both even or they're both odd, I'm expecting an even answer, guys. Conversely, when I have different types of number, five is an odd number and eight is an even. This is the only time in addition that I'm going to see an odd answer. 5 plus 8, well, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's 13. Ends in a 3. That's odd. So that should help you cut down on half of the mistakes that most of people make in their addition. Right there. Know if your answer should be even or odd. In chapter one, exercise three of the GED book, they're gonna ask you all to memorize your multiplication facts. This is the same, te the same thing every teacher has been asking you to do since probably second or third grade. And I've heard it from a lot of y'all, well, I just can't memorize my multiplication facts. And that's okay if you can't memorize them. I'll teach you a trick later. Um, but for now, what, what am I talking about? I'm talking about those one-digit facts, like five times seven. A lot of y'all know that's 35. Don't worry if you don't know that. We'll look at how to figure it out. But um, or another example, four times eight. That's 32. So we're just looking at one-digit numbers times one-digit numbers. It's best if you have all of those memorized. Okay, um, 
So to be able to talk about how to solve them if you don't have them memorized, we really need to discuss what multiplication is. So that's the question, what is multiplication? To be able to define multiplication properly, I need to take it back a notch, guys. We need to talk about addition. So very first thing that we learned to do mathematically uh, way back when we were all really little was to add numbers. And your math teacher probably told you that if Jimmy had three candies, I love candies, or perhaps they're explosions, I don't know. Jimmy had three candies and Sally had four. She's got candy canes, guys, they're easier to draw. How many total candies do they have? Well, that's just an addition problem. Just add the three and the four together and it looks like we've got a total of seven pieces of candy. So multiplication is actually very similar to addition. What's the difference? In the land of multiplication, everything's fair. Everybody's got the same amount. And that's the big difference here. In the land of multiplication, if Jimmy has, uh, let's see, what shall we have? Let's have balls because they're easy to draw. If Jimmy's got three of them, the beach kind, guys, and Tanya's got three of them, Sally's got three of them, in times, everybody's got the same amount. Then so does Jack. And so, oh, I didn't give Jack enough. So does Lisa. So basically what I'm saying here is I have five children and each one of them has three of these beach balls. And therefore, I have the number three. I could add it up five times, but mathematicians are the chronically lazy people. We don't want to write anything we don't have to. This took a long time, made me tired just thinking about it. And so what we did was we invented uh, multiplication, a new way to think about this. And so what we say is we have three five times. We have three, the same number three, five times. And of course, that is 15. Knowing this will lead us right into how we can figure out a multiplication fact if we don't have it memorized. So once again, let me repeat that with your multiplication facts, the best case scenario, guys, is that we've got them all memorized. So memorize, memorize, memorize. And I've got some sets set up in Quizlet uh, that will enable you guys to do that really easily. Our ultimate goal is that you can do set 1.3 multiplication tables flawlessly. Uh, but the thing about this one is it's got all the multiplication facts from 0 to 12. If you're the type of person who mostly knows their multiplication tables and just needs maybe a refresher on a few that you always forget, like 7 times 8, I always forget that one. That one's 56, but I've written it wrong on the board many a time. So uh, if you're that type of person, this is probably where you should start. But what if you're starting from scratch and that's a whole lot of times tables to take on at once? Well, I've got it set up so that um, there's a bunch of lettered sets, um, 1.3a, 1.3b, and so on and so forth, that break up our times tables into individual sections. So let's pretend you're the person that knows all their times tables for the zeros, ones, twos, and threes, but they start getting a little stuck when it comes to the four times tables. How would you use Quizlet? Well, what you're gonna do is you'll start in section 1.3D, and this is just an example, guys. You can start wherever you need to start. Take a look what I, what I have in there. But 1.3D gives you the four times tables. And you can do that to memorize your fours. And then what you do is you'd move on to E, do your five times tables, and F, 1.3.F, and do your six times tables. And then, what do you do from there? Well, I don't recommend going right on to your sevens because we have a tendency, if we don't review things, to forget them. So the next step, 1.3G actually has the four through sixes mixed all together so that you can take it on in bigger chunks. Start mixing those facts up, see if you can get your brain back straight again. 
And then finally, you'd move on to 1.3H, which gives you the zeros through sixes. You really give yourself a challenge.